Is climate change solely to blame for this? Pakistan has monsoons every year and is no stranger to flooding. Could there not have been better government planning? Certainly, we are no stranger to flooding at all. It's been a regular uh, uh, season, if you like, uh, every year. And uh, the issue, but the issue here is, of course, there is always room for better planning. I quite agree. The issue here is that uh, we have uh, received in the province of Sindh, for instance, and then Balochistan, Sindh has received 740 percent more rain than we've ever had. Uh, Balochistan has uh, seen 400 plus percentage of rain uh, we've ever had. Pakistan as a whole then falls into a 200 plus percent. So it's been uh, an, a completely unprecedented downpour that just does not stop. Monsoon rains usually have a cycle of two to three, maximum four to five, and then there's a gap in between. We've had in the south of Pakistan a nonstop cycle since July, and, and, and there's been no relief. There's been a few days gaps. The water has not drained out from any of the communities or even homes or fields or, or factories and offices. So yes, of course, our infrastructure is paralyzed. Our people are desperate for shelter and food. We can't even uh, normally, we provide helicopter support when there's a flood, like the 2010 flood. But we are, were unable to provide the helicopter sorties many of the times because it was raining and the helis had to return to base. So now, today, we have, since yesterday, we've had flooding in the Kabul rivers, which is the traditional flooding we see, because what we saw this year was completely a, a different pattern of flooding. The South does not get this level of flood, which is why many were clearly unprepared. We do not get this level of right. uh, torrential right. monsoon. And now we're seeing the North beginning to flood, which is the traditional riverine flooding. So it's cascading down from all sides. It is definitely a climate catastrophe of unprecedented proportions, and no country, province, or region can cope with this alone. Yes, we are calling for all UN agencies and humanitarian relief uh, 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 NGOs as well as the international okay. community to mobilize support. 33 million people are affected. It, it's hard to wrap your brain about just that's larger than most of the many countries. Is there even anywhere for people to go to get shelter? Well, we are now looking at uh, makeshift shelters, empty schools, because no one's going to schools, obviously, school buildings, which are everywhere. We're even using mosques for shelter because we can't get the tents. We don't have enough tents to, uh, you know, be, be sent to such places. So we're asking people to move to safer ground. That in itself is a huge challenge because sometimes moving to safer ground is now requiring the Navy to mobilize. We've never had the Navy. We have the Air Force and the Army always. Now we've got the Navy mobilized within the country to try to move people to safer ground. And some places don't have constructed shelters. They're out there uh, without food, shelter. And that in itself is the first response crisis. The healthcare crisis is, of course, looming, as is the reconstruction and the crop loss after this. Uh, so it's uh, really causing a, a, a large amount of national resources, uh, relief rescue resources, to be overwhelmed. And uh, really, it's it's completely um, the deluge is, is not stopping. Um, this is clearly a climate crisis of the decade, and we all need to be mindful of the fact that the climate uh, crisis is here and now. And clearly, Pakistan is because of its uh, geopolit uh, geo geo uh, geo geographical position rather. We are at the ground zero of, of the front line. We have the largest glaciers in the world, number of glaciers in the world outside the polar region, which are beginning to melt through no fault of our own. It's global warming. We are very, we are less than 1% of GHG emissions. Uh, and down south, we have this torrential downpour. We have every day, the, we brace when the Met Office tells us, okay, there's a system coming in, a lower, a lower sort of system coming in from uh, uh, the Bay of Bengal. And then it just hits us in cascades okay. that nobody is prepared okay. for. One city has received 100 and 1,000 and 100 millimeters of rainfall. 
I'm not aware that any city in the world is able to right. cope with that. Right. And obviously this is the most pressing concern right now, the flooding that's taking place uh, right now and the people who need urgent help. But what is the Pakistani government doing uh, about the climate crisis to prevent uh, future disasters such as this? Well, obviously, we are uh, trying our best to look at, we, we were already looking at uh, agriculture that is a little climate resilient, but but after the waters recede, let me tell you, Pakistan's frontline climate emergency is still going to be water because we are going to be water scarce. Uh, that, as well as our uh, crop cover, which uh, is, is, you know, feeds our population and, and, and aids with our export bill, is going to be one of the biggest crises. But after this, it's going to be rebuilding. I, I, I think more than, uh, I, I can't tell you how much of Pakistan is affected right now, but by the time this is over, we could have well have one fourth of one third of Pakistan underwater. Mm -hmm. and, and the amount of, from railways to roads to bridges, I mean, we've already had over 145 bridges just collapse with the velocity and scale of water, especially in the north. The hill torrents are just uh, so powerful that they're sweeping away entire, one uh, entire barrage got swept away yesterday. Munda, I think, in the north. And uh, we, we were beginning evacuations. But where do you evacuate people to? Where do you even right. pump out the water? Right. Because there's water next to it. Right. So it's right. like a biblical flood. and. Uh, we need all the help we can get for, as well as technical advice on how to cope with this. We have a lot of policies on paper, the adaptation, etc. Up till now, we were well. We were trying to increase our forest cover and reduce emissions, but as I said, we are one less than one percent of GHG emissions. This is something that uh, that is a global crisis, and we will need. Uh, of course, we'll need better planning and and sustainable, uh, uh, you know, development on the ground. Uh, obviously, we'll need to have climate resilient uh, crops as well as structures. But to reconstruct an entire country by climate resilient standards is okay. a very tall order. If I can just yes. uh, just uh, ask you real quick, the UN is saying three million people in Pakistan are affected by the flooding, but um, you're saying upwards of 35 million are affected. What's behind the discrepancy in numbers? No, we're saying 33, and yet really the numbers may be upwards to that. No, the UN uses mostly, I don't know what they're using. Uh, they're, we're on the ground since July. Our NDRMA is giving us these figures for our rescue and relief, and these are from our provinces. These are generated from provinces by criteria that is looking at affected families, uh, affected people, not just families. The UN may be looking at households which then divides it by five or six in Pakistan. And we're also looking at people whose houses have been damaged, who are right now without shelter, without food, perhaps looking for medical camps. So whatever the distress calls we are receiving from our provinces and our two federal areas in the north, uh, that is the, the total we are getting. That could mean anybody who's stranded. That could mean anybody who's uh, has had a house damage. That could mean anybody who's uh, lost all their fields and, and, is, and is stranded somewhere. So these are the on-ground statistics we have, and we will, of course, continue to share them.